Hi, everybody. I have got such a great little conversation for you today. Days of our lives. Rob Scott Wilson is here with me and Katie McLean. And this is very special because we all kind of go way back and they've been part of different parts of my career as I've watched different parts of their career. Um, we all worked at Prospect Park together. We all yes. worked at days, we've all worked at Days of Our Lives. Um, they are on Days of Our Lives. And I want to talk to both of you. First of all, both of you have been recasts in your career a few times. Um, Katie was Rosanna on As the World Turns, and then now Jennifer on Days. And Rob, you were Pete Cortland on All My Children. And then, of course, our dear friend Ben Weston on Days. When you look back at being recast and coming into these roles, what do you remember the hardest part of it was? Or were you like, I don't want to do this? Or were you like, I'm so grateful to have a job. I'm just. <laughs> I, I think for me, the hardest part is like how when I think about the other person that played the role before me and I, I'm like, oh gosh, did they, did they want to be here? Did I, did I step on their toes? Uh, you know, but, but in both cases, I don't think that was the, that was the case, but I just have a, a sensitivity to other actors and, you know, wanting to make sure that they, they know that I respect their work and what they brought to the table. And, um, you know, that I'm not trying to take anything away from them or, or copy them in any way. You know, the funny thing with daytime that is a humbling thing as an actor is ultimately it's all glory to the story. Mm -hmm. It's all about the story. And we're just here in service of the story. And right. so I'm here today, maybe I'm not here tomorrow, maybe somebody else will wear this character. But as long as the character is alive, then the audience gets to enjoy the character and the story. So it's it's that's the, the difficult part is just my love for the other actors and my my respect for the work that they did to to fill those shoes for the years that they did and me wanting them to know that to know that and there's no way for me to tell them that you know I can't be like hey I'm playing the part that you did huh? are you cool with that like that just is not like that's not so that's not the way it goes you know <laughs> you, you well, can't but, really do that but on that, you you know, here's the situation. Melissa Rees did not come back to the show. And like, here you were. Now, this is Jennifer Horton. This is Jennifer yeah, Horton. Know. This is legacy Jennifer Horton. And when they, when you, it was your time, they're like, let's have Katie McLean come in to do it. Were you like, what? Are well, we listen, I'm just a pinch hitter. I'm just in for a short period of time during a tough situation where she understandably wants to be with her family and protect her family. So I'm just, you know, it was a batter batter, who can come to bat? I happen to live 15 minutes from the studio. I don't have kids. You know, and I don't she's have got a hell of a swing. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing. It's like you can't ask me to play ball and then like not ask, not let not, not want me to to not try really hard, you know, but to play my best best my best game you know that said you know uh i i think I, I hope that the audience is just they're just enjoying me as an actor at in this time for this in this role for this time I, I know it's been tough for them though i know some people are like never ever will i see anybody else in this part and i completely respect that totally i totally get it i mean she's been there for what 25 years and she's earned her place so she deserves that kind of, you know, I've loyalty. Seen all the people that have said, oh my God, Katie McLean is amazing, amazing. I've seen so much of like, holy, oh my God, she's amazing. Like, there's been a lot of positive. Absolutely. Uh, and I'm super grateful for that because, you know, like I, I just want, I, I thought so much about like, oh my gosh, who's going to be watching the show right now? And it's going to be a lot of people who are in hospitals um, or stuck at home. There's a lot of single people at home who don't have families, who can't get out and about and how lonely they are. And I thought this really speaks to me, and my core reason why I, I am an actor, which is to connect with people. And so it's almost like trying to, to be of service, if you will, like, let me, let me show up and, and be an entertainer for people who are suffering or lonely and, and that is my key. Like that's what turns turns the engine in me to want to give 
my emotions and, and open up my heart and let people see me do my my work. So. Rob, so you you were Pete on all my children. Did you know that there were like six Pete's before and they had like <laughs> grown this character from and then <laughs> Yeah, I mean I, I I was I was aware I was aware um somewhat of 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 the previous Pete's and um <laughs> man I was I was more so just nervous for my first um time as like a series regular and, and not just series regular but like in soaps you know the the workload and it being a part of this new you know new platform and um i'm so grateful for all of it but yeah i i, I definitely knew about it but i wasn't like oh what what do i need to do to uh you know make him make him different or make him more like what previous actors had done with pd i was so i was so caught up in just wanting to do good work and not think about who played it before or anything else. And there was just certain situations that really comforted me enough to um, kind of allow the trust to come through. And that was a big uh, day one with uh, Miss Jill Larson. I will never forget. And from that very day, things just changed. And, you know, the producers came up to us and the, the directors for that day was actually uh, Stephen Williford, who I ended up working with a days, uh, years later. <laughs> you know, on these, these faces that I still see somewhat, you know, and um, I, it took the nerves away. I was still, it was a workload, but it, I was like, no, I, I can do this. And I love these people. And there was just so much comfort and trust and love in this new environment. And we all were like saddled up to like embark on this hike of this new platform for daytime. And um, yeah, man, if it weren't for being able to play Petey, I may not have had the opportunity of days. And um, I surely wouldn't have gotten the offer because I just, I got the offer for Ben um, just from, from all my children. So I'm just so, so grateful. Do you remember meeting each other at all my children? Of course. I, I, as soon as, as soon as she came back, I was like, I will never forget our conversation on the plane. We did a, um, a women's convention, like a, a fan event somewhat. Yeah. Long story short, Katie and I chopped it up on the plane for a long time and she just shared her, her, her well of wisdom and, and, and experience to, um, my like myself over here like wow i'm just listening you know i'm just trying to sponge it all in all in and sponge it yeah. yeah and i'm just like man what a surreal experience and it, it really just you know carried from there and katie you know has been doing daytime for so many years and uh, it has been i mean from dixie and rosanna and all it, it, she's just been so part of the fabric of it um that it's always so great i think when the fans get to see her because it's like oh katie we're, we're comfortable with her. We, we like, yeah. her. you know, there's something to be said about that that you only get in this genre. It's yeah, so absolutely. unique unto itself. Well, just as you get that, you know, we get the other side of it too, where you have the people that refuse to see somebody else. Right. But when you have that much of a, a, a kind of a built-in audience already that respects it, it's an easier transition. And whether or not she had that anyway, when she comes in and does her work, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to do what it does and what it did, you know, she's, she's, mm. she's an honest and great actor. So like, it's going to work no matter what, but this is a very tough genre. I've, I've seen it firsthand, you know, um, the idea of recast, some people are all about it and other people are like, never, you know, so it's a, mm. it's a tricky, it's a tricky lane, but. And so when you took over Ben after having done the all my children situation and you got the opportunity to do it, were you like, at that point, the character they changed the character. You know? Yeah, they, they, I remember, I mean, I remember when the breakdown originally came off for that character, I was still working on all my children and they were like, we can't submit you because we were expecting to go back. We kept getting told we were going to go back. We're going to do this and we're going to go back and this and that. So um, I never auditioned for Ben originally and Ben was drawn up a lot different than the route they ended up taking him. So the, um, the, the gentleman that was playing him for a very short amount of time at the beginning, they like went a completely different route and I don't know what changed uh, behind the scenes, but they wanted to take him in a different direction. And um, yeah, it all, it, it just came together. And I had just flown back here to Boston for a holiday and I was long story short. I mean, I was supposed to test for a different project after all my children It fell through. I was like, I'm going home. I need to go step away from LA for a second. And, you know, they were asking about doing a self tape at that point, And I had planned on doing it. And um, I think they were in such a need for somebody. And um, Lisa de Cazette, was one that vouched for me and pretty much got me the offer with the rest of the, you know, the producers and, and everybody and, and got me the green light. 
Um, so forever grateful to her, you know, mm. forever grateful to her. Forever grateful to her. Katie, do you remember Rob when you first came to All My Children and you were like, wait, who's this playing Peacock? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> well you know the whole the whole online all my children was such a wild adventure and wild such a wild wild west. wild ride yes and so uh i was very excited though i mean i i always love young young actors but the, when i saw rob and jordan lane price do uh, uh, the, their wonderful okay. romantic storyline, which was so oh. adorable. I just <laughs> loved it. I know it was cheesy, but it was like, it's the best kind of cheese. It's the it was, cheese it was you, very, it was, I missed it. Was it was wonderful. And, and, and it was romance and, and sweetness and innocence and young couples coming together. And I thought, this is so beautiful. And that you guys embraced it, you know, and you went for it and, and, you weren't cynical. You weren't like, eh, I'm too old for this, you know, like, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm too city, you know, like you were just like, let's do this. Let's do love, you know? Course, and I course. just, that made me so happy. And, and you guys were, we were also like kind of marooned there. And uh, we, we had that sofa area and we were all in this hotel. And oh. so we all were just kind of like hung out. Eric Nelson was also a yeah. part of our little gang. And, in Stanford. You know, in Stanford. In Stanford, Connecticut, where there's, I flew oh, in. I flew in, and we were so, all. Yeah. I don't know if you remember. I don't think. I think you were there, but I was there with you guys. We were sitting there because I'd flown in to do. So I was working on the marketing of the show. Yeah. Mm. I was working on the marketing, uh, and I was working with uh, Jeff Quanton and the Prospect Park team in LA. And I would fly to Stanford, and we would do these stuff that I do with you guys, and yeah. we were doing all these marketing stuff. And I remember going, "Wait, who's Jordan? And what's going on? Who, what?" And I was right. there, like, "This is going to be our young couple." You know who we're missing here is Sal Stowers. Sal Stowers right. was also right. someone was I just I, I met and I just adore. And to this day, I just adore her. And I'm loving her work and I'm loving Rob's work. And that was the great thing is like we worked together this time. And I mean, how many years ago was that? Like seven years ago? Seven years, 2013 and 2014 ish, I think. Seven, no, just 2013, ago? I think. 2013, yeah. yeah. So uh, I know eight, eight years ago. And you know, flash forward all this time. And I've been able to catch you guys every once in a while on days. And I was like, oh my God, look how they've grown and they're doing this other kind of work. And you went into this whole dark thing that you just <sighs> totally embraced. And it was so exciting. Like, you know, it, I'm always so excited to see, to, to be able to watch you grow up, you know, and watch you expand as, a, as an artist. And it's just so, so, so great to see. And uh, so I'm extremely proud of you and, and Sal both. It's, Thank you. You you made my day again. But when I read <laughs> whatever interview you had done, and some some fans, a bunch of fans, had taken it and posted it and retweeted it, it just you know it warmed my heart because I felt like um, I made you proud a little bit, and it just made me feel good. It was like you know everybody likes to be validated, you know sometimes, but when you get it from your your peers that you know, especially legends and, and true pros at this genre, it just really filled my heart and made me feel really really good. Um, we do the best we can with the times that are permitted, you know, and um, like everybody knows how fast soaps are, but especially now, man, it's a, it's a really different beast and um, mm. it just really made me happy. So thank you. Mm. And you I'm so happy that you are joining us. I'm so happy. So. Were you <laughs> devastated when all my children, they, they were gonna not continue it? Or were you like, how did you feel about it at the time? The, the, the on, online on, one? Online, yeah. I think it was more frustrating than anything else because we had the people. We had the people who knew how to do the job and put the show on. We had the production team, we had the crew, we had a studio and I was like, what is stopping us? Why are, we had the fans rooting for it. So it was really just frustrating, I think more than anything. And, uh, you know, just uh, disappointing. And, um, and that, you know, as actors, there's really nothing we can do. It, it, you know, we can just, just, you know, cross our fingers and toes and, and hope that the, that the production team can pull it off, you know, but right. yeah. And, and there's only so much we are allowed to know. We just can't know everything that why it didn't exactly happen. And then you just kind of like, guess, and you're like, well, was it this, was it that? And I'm like, right. I, I don't know. I just don't know. You know, there's so many things, so many compensating factors, and it was just out of our control or whatever. And I was just like, I know that we started making a splash in a very short amount of time. And I also know that we had an endeavor in front of us that nobody had done yet. You know, it's 
to have a, 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 a genre like soaps go be the first ones through the wall. We're going to get the bloodiest, you know, uh, going through the wall of, of Hulu, you know, and, and getting people to log on. And, and now that's all people do. So if that had been fast forwarded to set, you know, seven years, it might've been a whole different world. I think know? it would have been, I think it would have been because we, it was the first, it was. But, the and, first. And, and with that being said, you know, it was like, without that moment for me personally, again, like I said, I wouldn't, I, I may not have had days, which ultimately has become my home and my, my you know, a lot of my heart. And, um, it all happened for a reason, but I was, I was definitely disappointed because I was like, wow, I'm, we were really getting after it. It's those last eight, that last like five week run or whatever, we were cramming so much work. Everybody was working so hard at all my children. I remember when it wrapped, we were like seeing through walls because we're doing 40 pages a day at some point. I'll never forget. And I was like, I can't believe I've only been doing this like six months and now I'm doing 40 pages a day and I feel good. And yet I was still very green. I was very green, but we were getting it done. Um, but I was like, I, I wanted to finish. I wanted to finish my soap degree. I was like, I, don't, I, I haven't had enough yet. <laughs> right, you're not done. I was like, I was like, my second semester, and you're gonna cut us short. I was like, I'm, we're not done, you know. Um, so having the opportunity to go to, to days really helped me, um, you know, finish my my soap masters. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you know, I, you both have had such interesting characters. You know, I think um, Katie has the poison pancakes killing the character as one of the all time. <laughs> Most notorious. you poison the damn pancakes? Oh no, they God. poison. Pa she ate poison pancakes, Dixie. Oh, you ate them? Yeah, and then Who she made them. <laughs> you know, I don't. If there was some killer on the loose, and this was their idea, I've died many times on soap. <laughs> so you know, many, yeah. many times, car accidents, comas. <laughs> uh, you know, the pancakes was an original one for sure. <laughs> um, I've been stabbed. Uh, you know, yeah. I, you know, it's, it's, yeah. And, uh, and I've died and come back on the same, on, on all my children a couple of times. And I think a couple of times on world terms too. So, you know, you just roll with it. <laughs> <laughs> She's resilient. She's resilient. Hey. Ben Scott, yeah, like, you've had stuff too, Rob. I mean, your stuff's been out there. <laughs> for sure. Out for there. sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. We had some wild stuff happen and dude, I mean, you know, before Ron got there, it was still, it was good. You know, when we went to the dark side, I was like, you know, I can look at this as one of two ways. It's either a door closing or I'm just about to have an opportunity to kind of show some of my other range and kind of dive into some places that we haven't done yet, you know, in this genre and on that show. And it ended up opening the door 10 times more. Um, and then when Ron came on, he scripted this beautiful like redemption story that just caught fire. And I'm just super grateful to him. You know, it's, this is him and his team, um, I just had to breathe myself into it is what I've been saying is like, I just had to do my work, but they scripted something that was really riding the line. And I think they did a good job and I'm just grateful, so. It's so interesting when the day of days thing came up and every, well, we're dealing with the pandemic and everyone's like, does that mean you won't be, to me, but they're like, you're not gonna be doing a Robin Victoria interview this year? Oh man. I'm like, oh, cause they're always so much, they're like, they just, they're epic. <laughs> It ends up being just it, funny, and uh, really, I'm like, man. I'm oh. like, I'm like, we. I'm so sorry. You don't want a happy meal. You don't want a fast pass, do you? You guys want to be along for the whole you entree. You're sitting, you're sitting stick. down to an entree. We're not bringing you through the drive-through. Where you guys, you're in it for the long run. So uh -huh. sit tight. Okay. I promise you, your meal, meal is gonna be worth it. Listen, yeah, we're not firing off Lobster. double bacon cheeseburgers. <laughs> we're kicking you filet mignon. So like. You're not going back to Hamburger Helper after this. Just remember, a quality you. meal is worth you. waiting for. I promise. A truffle oil and everything. This truffle, is like the Nobu. Truffle butter. Let's go. This is the Nobu to the Ralph Sushi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, kids. Welcome to Nobu. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> now it's really about for Ben to make him interesting without, well, you know, without her there. You know. Yeah, with, and it, like, don't get me wrong. I, I know she I know. comes back. I want us to kick ass. You know, we we've we've done our thing. I, I'm very proud of our work, and she's an awesome actor. And I'm, dude, I'm grateful that she was Sierra, and that they had the idea to pen this story that we had no correlation. Anyway, um, yeah, I do. I want him to be. I mean, if there's ever a test of somebody's true testament of their character and their ability to change, it's how they can stand on one leg without their counterpart, and how they behave when they don't have that that person to rely on you know do we see this guy spiral out of control and go out of out of his mind or do we see him try to sustain himself and and be whole again on his own 
And I think there's just because she's not there every day, there's still a love story to be told in that, you know, and um, they're not going to go rushing to put him with somebody romantically for sure, but there will be friendships that maybe will blossom. Who knows? I, I really don't know what they're doing, but um, I know between their writing team and any power I have for him, I will do my damnedest to make sure he's interesting and that he doesn't become this one note, you know, puppy dog because he lost his wife. I will fight it with everything I have, but there's still going to be some sadness, man. He's going through a lot. So we're trying to just figure out what the next step is for him, you know? And, and for both of you, this is, you know, Rob, I was, one of the last times I saw you um, was in February right. or March when yeah. we shot the wedding of Ben and Sierra. Right. And I remember, and I want to ask you both if you had this, that every, Rob did such a beautiful job at the vows with Ben and Sierra that everybody that was there, the cast, everybody applauded after like, you know, Aww. the scene. Have you had those moments too, Katie, when they get the crew, people are like, oh my God. You know, because that was such a great thing to watch for Rob. I was, I was very, um, I was like, yes, good. He gets the respect that he deserves for that moment from his peers and the crew. Well, how lovely. Uh, that must have felt amazing. Um, I think so I've memorized so many lines that I'm a little <laughs> brain damaged and my memory is not like there. <laughs> like, I don't remember certain things until somebody tells me, do you remember when this happened? And I was like, oh, but no, 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 Yes, you know, like I just, it's, it's so, it's, it, it just can pop into, pop into mind every once in a while. I don't think all my children in the old days was a big applauder. And I don't, they definitely didn't do it on World Turns as far as I remember, unless, you know, somebody's like, hey, Ding Dong, like this, remember this? I'm like, you know, but, uh, and I think that's the funny thing about soaps in general is like, usually we don't have a, a crew or a cast that like, we don't get the feedback until we, now we get right. to see it online. And right. the show is, we shoot so many, so far in advance, which is less than it used to be, but still quite, quite far in advance um, that it's like, uh, you know it's it's a it's a weird delay you know in in that in that response so so much so lately i mean and, and this is why i reach out to other actors all the time because i feel like it's our job as a community of actors to say like hey i saw that and that was great i saw mm. that moment i saw mm. your effort you know um you know i saw that that little turn that you did and it's wonderful working with um with Matthew because he's also like that and so we we tend to like if we, we just did some stuff with um with uh, a, an actress I can't I, I guess if I say who she is I'd be giving away a story but we just did something with her and we cornered her afterwards and we were like that was so great you know we had to like <laughs> you know and and we also knew what she had to do uh, uh, beforehand so we were both like sending her texts and we didn't know we were both sending her texts and she's like you guys are both texting me what's happening you know but I guess <laughs> I guess because we know that how that feels like like wow I'm you know is it is there an echo in here you know <laughs> hello 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 I'm like did I just act up by myself what's happening but, uh... <laughs> I know I know sometimes <laughs> you do these we'll do these big scenes and it's like you know you got it and it's like well we got it okay moving on you know but it's like right yeah you sometimes you don't get that feedback and most yeah. of the time you don't um, most of the time you don't and you wait sometimes until it airs the but... too. yeah yes so producers. Sometimes the producers we're can. We're lucky and with will. days. Yeah, we're yeah. lucky with days. Like we have Janet and Albert watching the monitors every scene, and I don't know about the other um, the other shows, but oh, wow, that's I feel like yeah rare. You know, the producers yeah. to be watching every moment. You know, and and that's yeah. that's huge. You know, I think yeah. daytime yeah. still gets a bad rap in times in, in terms of the entertainment industry uh, a little bit still. And so, you know, from my perspective, what I like to be able to do. And you guys know this is like when I see a performance, I will call it out. I will say on social media or on posts, power performance, Rob, Katie, the, you know, like let people know, like, this was amazing. You know, check this out. Because I think we get to, it's five days a week. It's airing all the time. It goes on. And I think what I try to do from a critical perspective, knowing the genre as well as I've known it for so many years is like point out that stuff. Absolutely. Because who else is going to do it? You know, I mean, yeah, you, I, you were the know. best with that, Michael. We we'll miss you. Do we it, miss you. you. Know? Yeah. We we'll miss you with that well, stuff. Like, you know, you are, you yeah. are the man. You are the man for that. You know. Yeah. Um, 
What are you going to say? Gonna say? Oh, I was just going to say, like, you're you're sort of, you're Michael Fairman for crying out loud. Like, there's right. only one. And <laughs> right. you created this whole industry of supporting soaps and, and supporting us actors and sharing your insights. And there's very few people who do what you do. And I just want you to know that we we also see you and appreciate you and appreciate what you Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So I wanted to ask you, Katie, you know, everyone's talking about that bitch slap with uh, Lauren Coslow. It's epic. <laughs> it was an epic slap. People are like, she can, she can go down and slap. So what do you remember about the scene and that bitch slap between Kate and Jennifer? Because it's the talk of the, it was the talk of the internet the other day. Oh, it's so funny. Well, you know, we slapped, we both slapped the other. We, she yes, slapped me, know. I slapped her. We slapped each other. I mean, I would, it could have gone further. I love, you know, I, it's really fun. It was fun, first of all, as actors, we had a little giggle ahead of time. We we're like, this is gonna be <laughs> silly. I was like, let's just go for it. And, um, you know, I think the scenario is what's so intriguing. You know, in a weird way, the slap is, of course, no one should ever hit anyone, right? That is completely wrong, but this is a soap opera. So we're, we, we live in fantasy land. And um, in fantasy land, like the, the end, it's just fant fantastic that like she hits me and then we keep talking, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> <sighs> you really got me there, girl. Like what, <laughs> what situation are you gonna be like? I would not be like, all right, we're rolling up the sleeves. Is this happening? Is this happening? We're doing this. Are we doing this? Cause like voices would get raised and shit. We'd be, you know, if no one's around we'd be shaking each other. But like it, in soap opera, you keep talking and, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> How that happened, I don't know. But I do think That's there's great. something very intriguing about uh, what, like this whole thing of like, okay, your husband just slept with me one time, get over it, you know? And I'm like, <laughs> While you're in a coma. Well, I mean, I guess While you're I kind of technically, you know, separated. Do you call that technically separated? Were we separated? I was not, I didn't choose to separate. I, how did, how do we back? It's an interesting argument. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Right. As far as I knew, I was just not, I was just in a very elongated blackout. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> when you found out the point of the story was happening, what was your thoughts on it? what did you think? Um, which, which, the, the that point Jack of, uh, slept with Kate while she was in a oh, coma. And like, you well, know, you never have expected that twist, you know? I think, well, I guess for me as a woman of a certain age, um, <laughs> there's, 24. you know, <laughs> God bless you. What's your address? I need to send you some, <laughs> some money. <laughs> Is it, what, who do I write the check? Um, <laughs> but you know, there's a, it's, it's humiliating. It touches on her pride, you know? It touches on like, I wasn't worth waiting for. Um, and sure, I, I, from what I understand about the history of, of Jack, you know, he's a tender soul. He's, he's not, he needed her to be the rock and she wasn't there to be the rock. And so he had a moment, a lapse of judgment and, you know, she should be able to forgive him. But I think because of everything that they've been through, at least the way I saw the opportunity to play it was that um, it's just, it hits her at a very sensitive time in, in her life as a woman. And the kids are grown and she needed her husband to hold the faith for her after everything they'd been through. She needed him to be the rock and he couldn't do it. And that just is, it becomes a, uh, she has to kind of go through a process to to understand that and accept that and love him anyway and, and go back to the love that they had and and you know the Kate's character you know points out fairly to say like you knew who he was you knew that he's a fragile man you knew that this is a, he's a sensitive man and and I was there and I could give him that love and be that rock for him at that time so and we didn't carry it on and it's not a love affair and it just takes a almost a european mindset <laughs> <laughs> it's that intimacy thing that you you had an intimate relationship with my husband's body you know that's that's my body that i fought for and took care of and you know brought a sandwich when he was sick and mm. you know and nurtured and 
And there is something sacred about the, the vows that you make when you commit to someone so fully and completely, you bond, you bond your lives together. Uh, and so him breaking of that bond is, is, is a very serious thing. And I think it, you know, understandably takes Jennifer real time to, to come to forgiveness. And the way that I've kind of really saw it in a way is, is, it is a, a test of her own faith, you know, a test of her own, like that you can overcome anything if the love is still there. And mm. um, so that's the, that is the challenge. I'm way, I'm worried about her pill addiction coming back. That's what I'm worried about. That's you know, it, say. it would be very <laughs> fair. That's what I'm, it yeah. Makes, I would think if it's going to happen, Cute. Hopefully yeah. she doesn't take too many more hits to the face because that might induce the pills. <laughs> and or sudden, she becomes for the yeah. Or there's like a, a future in boxing. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, there we go. Jennifer Rose Horton decide... boxer. There you go. Could you imagine? Right? <laughs> but that would be like a cool thing to see. Fifty-year-old flip, boxing you know? ladies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's sort of like let's see. You know, but I, it's, it's just so interesting how the whole, in, in terms of the world of Salem, that the whole community comes around to have that has a point of view and a perspective you know, that they get to, they get, they get to talk about it as well. And so we're kind of all going through it because those characters are such touchstones for other people. And so, you know, everyone seems to go, go through it together, which is also very interesting. Rob, um, how on earth yeah. did you get through all of the scenes with Cassie DePaiva and the, like, literally the emo, like the physicality and the emotion of the, <laughs> the mind uh, control, the, the, it was just so, not so out there and i was wondering <laughs> what was your thought of this were you like how am i gonna make this work or uh, well i mean <laughs> mr peanut has joined us ladies and gentlemen <laughs> oh there he is how would you have handled that torture scene mr peanut mr. um peanut. <laughs> <laughs> he's like i don't know um, like he's looking right at me too well wow. um <laughs> no um listen if there's anybody, and I, I meant it, I think, I, I don't know if I wrote it on Instagram, I wrote it somewhere, but if there's anybody who's gonna drug me, brainwash me, <laughs> torture me in my underwear, let it be Cassie DePaiva. Cassie she's DePaiva. just awesome. And she's so fun, and, and she's a great actress. This woman will give you everything you need to succeed. If, like, she is a great actress, she's very giving. Um, maybe we'll even crack you over the head for real with a stick, because that's what happened, and it was great. Um, and I just, I don't know, man, it was, it was really great. And when I first read it, I remember, ironically, Ron was actually visiting the studio. And I was like, hey, man, listen, this stuff is great. But I'm, do I really got to be in my underwear? And he's like, that was Albert's idea. And I was like, oh. I'm with it. <laughs> but then I remember, but then I remember there was a scene. And this one, I was like, okay, if um, if um, James Bond can do it, then I can do it. There was a scene in in one of the new newer James Bond films where he's tortured and he's stripped down to his skibs. And it's this vicious torture scene. And I'm like... There's something primal and more raw about it. And of course, yeah, it's daytime, we're shirtless, whatever. But it I could I could justify it then. Cause at first I was like, damn, I'm like, damn, I'm in my underwear for this whole thing. It's gonna be a long day. Um, <laughs> but it was uh I, I loved all of it. And I had one of the one of the, my favorite times there. I'll never forget it. And um, you know, Michael Tay, who plays, you know, Vincent, he was fantastic, too. You know, everybody was fantastic. And the props team, they, they built this, like, whole vibe of, like, this clockwork orange mannequin with the face video of Sierra on it. And I'm <laughs> sitting here in this moment. And there was this moment where I'm, like, I'm sitting here drenched in sweat and in, in my own spit, probably, from screaming so loud, holding a necktie, strangling, doing this scene... <laughs> brainwashed with my wife i'm like when will i have this experience again as an actor i just wanted to go on the ride you know it was so fun and so out there and what else do we do this stuff for man you know we get it's rare times we get opportunities like that where it's like well man it reminds me of like a, a a bond scene but also a clockwork orange scene but here it is with my story that i love let's do this you know um we it's also class. committing. It's like how you commit, right? You've got to commit to the material. Yeah, and you know, everybody was full commit. on, full yeah. swing. Like Cassie DePaiva commits. Like oh, you yeah. said on there, yeah, she has a stick and she's hitting the, the lamp over him and shaking it. It had this really cool lighting where the, the light's shaking above my head and she came down with it, cracks me over my head. And she mentioned, she was like, hey, I might, you know, I'm like, Cass, like I'm yours. 
I am not that guy. You surprise me, I'm good. Like we're good. And she, <laughs> she popped me with this stick and it was, it was so jarring. And I'm actually pissed off because I'm tied up. So it just infumed this whole scene that carried everything. And like little stuff like that can really take the direction of like a, a story. I don't know. I'm a big fan of those little nuances that really change everything. And she, she was really great. Like, yeah, yeah, it was really awesome. Really awesome. So Katie, you have you work you've worked with Bill and Susan now? Bill and Susan. Yeah. So tell me what because they are the icons of the show, two of the icons, and you are part of that family right now um, on screen. What was it like doing Christmas? I mean, we're gonna see Christmas or whatever, but what was it like working with Bill and Susan and how were they with you? You know, you're this new Jennifer that they're not used to working with. You know, they just couldn't have been more lovely. And um, Susan is so funny and I, I mean I I found myself I mean I when I there are certain scenes and stuff where I was work with my husband John Lindstrom and we would sit on the uh he's an actor on GH as some people may or may not know and um Wait, and who? We would sit <laughs> <laughs> who that I mean um, um, yeah I mean yeah. that guy <laughs> but uh he uh he and I were sitting and looking at these scenes and like I, I said I can't believe I get to do like this stuff again and home and family and uh, and romance and I haven't done it in, in so long and can you believe I get to do this and and so I remember the first scene I got I did with them I was just looking at them with like I love you so much you're so <laughs> great I was such a nerd and just like just soaking it in because it's so magical I mean it's such a it's such the dream I think of everyone maybe you know you you've lost a family member or your family's far away or whatever and and here we get to do this pretend family at a at a at a, a, a more idealized type of event where everyone really loves and fights for each other. And at least for me, like it it really fills a hole in me where it's just very meaningful. And so, mm. so it was great. And and she is funny and fun, and she's a, a hoot. And uh, and he's just wow, what a career he's had! Just incredible. I respect them both so much. Right. They yeah. they really are some of the like like kindest, sweetest people. Susan is a riot. She's literally <laughs> hilarious. And um, yeah, man, I mean, they're just, Bill's such a nice guy, man. He gave me one of the greatest compliments. I'll never forget, like, do you remember that day with the wedding? We were there, uh, Michael, for, um, you know, <laughs> sorry, my dog's like choking over here. Do you were hear there her? 21 hours? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> it's a little She's over here choking. Parade. And you're, right, what's the name you're of right? the dog? Oh, that's Lola. Lola. Yeah, Lola. You all right, baby? Jeez. All right. Okay, you're good. All right. Um, no, he just he just stopped me. And he made this really wonderful comment. And, you know, everybody was so great that day. And to get the applause with everybody, but the with the vows was really so, it was amazing. I'm super grateful. But he stopped me on his own, and he didn't have to do that. And he was like, he, he just looked at me, and he was like, that was so beautiful. And when he says it, it just means something, because he's so honest and earnest and just a, a class act guy and it happened again when we were doing these Christmas scenes that haven't aired yet but the promo came out and he did it he did it again he just said how what a beautiful moment we get to have with each other with these ornaments and um I don't want to say too much because that's yeah but yeah, yeah. um but yeah he's part of that because obviously it's their house right yeah, yeah. so I'm not giving anything I'm not giving no, anything no. Away, we right? always know there's a Lola's Christmas and Lola's, 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 Lola's like <laughs> don't you tell story don't you yeah tell I'm story. all right <laughs> but, wait, no, we, but we know there's a horton christmas every christmas is tradition on the show yeah so we know and that, they but didn't again, do it we'd be he, like and we saw there's the ornament hanging and sierra comes out of nowhere and we saw yeah we there. saw that we just we saw that so hey hey lord let's not have relax i'm not giving anything away nobody cares it's okay we all know there's a horton <laughs> christmas coming like it's the season um Anyway, yeah, Susan is, she'll break you down and, and make you laugh hilariously. And then, um, yeah, Bill, Bill tugs in my heartstrings sometimes, man. He's, he's such a good guy. Such a good guy. Well, they kill me uh, emotionally. I was watching the Day of Days uh, thing you guys did, and I was watching the panel. And you know, it was Ken Corday and Suzanne Rogers and Bill and Susan. And when they were asking Susan the questions that they asked her, you know, she got very teary-eyed, very emotional because of mm. this place, Days of Our Lives, is her life too. You know, she met the man of her dreams on this show. She's mm. been part of the show for so many decades. 
She represents the show for so many generations of people. Um, and it, it moved me. Like I, I almost couldn't watch anymore because I was getting like, it was hard, you know? Um, but I love Bill and Susan and I was so fortunate when their Lifetime Achievement Award came up in mm. their time, I was the segment producer on the Emmys and I said, I've got to do their Lifetime Achievement Award package and piece. And I did. And it was one of the greatest things to be able to do. And we surprised them by bringing all these people in to talk about them on camera. They didn't know about it. And um, it was one of the highlights for me, you know, cause like oh. I got to produce a thing for these two icons and their Lifetime Achievement Award. And um, so I know what they mean to the show. And like when, when, when Bill says to Rob, great job, that means something. You yeah, know? man, he's very, just an honest, great guy. And what a career, what a career, you know, it's incredible. Do you, do you and uh, John Lindstrom, Katie, do you guys run lines for both shows? Do you play parts on GH? And so what parts- That's on awesome. GH, do you, what parts on GH do you like playing? Well, no, I, this is not, this is not going to be a, a great answer here, but like I, All when I, when I run lines with someone, I don't want to act those parts. I, I want to give them the flattest reading possible because I think when you're rehearsing with just somebody else for the sake of rehearsal, you want to give that, they're helping, you're learning the lines and stuff. That said, <laughs> gosh, it's fun. What more I gets to do. Good old uh, Ava Jerome. Damn, those are fun lines to say. They are so much fun. And you know how much I love Maura. Maura. She's just, Maura West is just one of my favorite people. I love watching her work and uh, I love her. I love her character. So when we're running lines, it's really fun when I get to say her stuff because I'm like, oh, she's going to kill this. <laughs> <laughs> now, what about when, now does he do days lines with you and who does he like playing? <laughs> Gosh. That's a fun, I don't know, actually. I don't know. But he's, he also does voiceover. So sometimes he just really gets into it. I'm like, honey, you're not helping me. <laughs> <laughs> I have to learn these lines. You have to stop and just, just give me nothing. Give me nothing. So, <laughs> but yes, he's, he's good at playing everything. I have to say. Yes. So Rob, how do you learn your lines? Do you have someone running lines? You do it all yourself. Like, how do you? No, I, I work my stuff as much as I can on my own. And then when I get to the studio nowadays, you know, it's just a different, it's a different world. So like trying to get people on schedule and be able to do rehearsals like this, I'm getting used to now. Um, but um, yeah, I do most of it on my own until I get to the studio. And I, if I can't track down my, you know, my, my scene partner, then my girl Maria O'Brien comes through always helping me color my, my story a little bit, or, you know, I, I feel like I can sometimes, Lola. Sorry. Let's just qualify that Marie O'Brien is the acting coach at days, right? She's there. Yeah. yeah. And she is my, she is so sweet, man. And don't get me wrong. A lot of the times we may not even be able to link up. Um, but so, most of the time nowadays, she, she just, she'll just let me fly and she'll give me the confidence behind it and be like, you know, very complimentary but there's some times where I'm like I'm just I feel like I'm faking it I feel like I'm just going through this and I'm kind of subtle I was like I know there's a meaning to this and she'll help me you know fill in those blanks and color my my, my picture and um, I'm forever grateful to her and she's always there and she's always willing and um, we're really lucky to have her and sometimes we don't especially now we don't always get the ability to utilize her you know and she it's great to just have a tool like that you know um, who's just watching you and listening to you and um, it's, it's really great, but I'm a, I'm a big fan of rehearsals, man. And in soaps, it's very hard to do that sometimes. And especially now with this whole thing, I'm getting used to it. I know this is the way the world's going, but like, man, I like being in person and rehearsing lines like normal. <laughs> like I really do. But what is it know? like for both of you? It's Katie and I were talking this uh, earlier. Um, you know, we <laughs> never thought we would have this pandemic in COVID-19 and the fact that the daytime shows did get up and running. What's it like at the studio for you? Are you tested multiple times? It, like what is kind of like, and I know they have plexiglass at different places and do you have to stay to your room? Are you allowed to like, can you give us any insight into how it's changed so much? Uh, well, I mean, and Rob, fill, fill in where I'm missing, missing things, but please, sure. um, there's a, uh, 
uh, you're tested the day of in the morning, you get an, a call at super early so that you go into a certain section in the building that's not that's cut off from the rest of the building and you get your you get your COVID test, and then you go back to your car and you wait until that test is comes back negative. Then you go in and you get a special tag that allows you to go onto the set, the stage area itself, and you you have to have your mask on at all times um, as soon as you enter the, the building, and hopefully you're wearing it in the parking lot as well. Um, and uh, let's see what happens after that. Then you go usually you pick up. We, we used to go to the hair and makeup room, but now we are, only, are have a limited amount, less time with hair and makeup. So you pick up your makeup box and you go to your room and you do your own hair and makeup the best that you can. And then you put your mask back on and you get like 10 minutes with hair and 10 minutes with makeup. And just for like a quick touch up and you keep your mask on during hair and you have, you have to take your mask off, but they're in full PPE with plexiglass between each station. And then you, to put your mask back on, not supposed to talk while you're getting makeup. And then you go back to your room and then you don't come out until you're called to set basically, or unless you have to go to the bathroom. Right, um, like you know some of the other shows, same thing. Like the actors, what I understand is they're not rehearsing scenes together in their dressing rooms. Are you no, no. You can't do that, right? No. We, we do it like this, like over an app. Over, over and, an app. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, or over the phone, a lot of people they don't like the app or that they can't get it because of the internet isn't great. So um, we rehearse over the phone. So like literally the first time, then we wear our masks to set and we are not, the actors are the only ones allowed to take them off and we're on the set it's, uh, that we're working on. And as soon as we're on that set, we can take it off. But we do, we get our blocking and then we dress rehearse. So we haven't even run lines face to face mm -hmm. like, until we're dress rehearsing, which is so weird. And then we take yeah. it. I think, and I think you're, you're spot on. You're spot on with all of it. That's how it goes. Um, the one thing that also was pretty jarring to me was the fact, like you know, and I understand. I guess this is kind of how it used to be many years ago. Is that you wouldn't dry block in the morning and then dry block in the afternoon and do stuff and afterwards and shoot it. Um, and now we get out there and our first time that we take our mask off and we see our scene partner for the first time of, of the day is to get a quick dry blocking where. Now we're not allowed to have papers really, which I still do. Um, I can't, I need paper. I need my script printed out still. So I just do it on my own. We don't get hard copies anymore. Um, comes in email format. So I got my own stuff and I just bring it. Um, but the blocking is so quickly rattled off to you um, and, and no fault of their own. It's just what we got to do now. Um, it's rattled off so quickly that that first rehearsal I'm kind of thinking about where I move on what mark or where I need to land for what cameras on me rather than already knowing my blocking and being able to rehearse the scene with my, my person, you know? Um, and that, that was kind of a little bit getting used to, but now here we are, and it's only been a few months. I feel used to it. I don't, I don't love it. I don't think anybody loves it. We all want to have more time and understand blocking more and stuff like that. But the, sometimes the blocking is more simple now, so it'll simplify it. Um, so it takes that burden off of us when we just get out there for the first time and can run it face to face. Um, but that's, that's the process. That's, that's what we're doing. Um, as we wrap, what could you say in a broad stroke for the holidays? Where is Ben at for the holidays? He's missing Sierra or he's just trying to get through Like, where is he at? Uh, he's, he is without a doubt missing Sierra, but there is, um, there is a faith over fear. Now there is a faith over fear is probably the best way I could put it. And, um, Again, they, they're penning this, and I don't know where it's going. I don't know what's happening. I truly don't. But um, I, I do believe that we are nearing the bend of, of um, having that hope back and that, that faith back, and it will reignite him to follow his heart. Like, like always, no matter what happens with this guy, man, it's always rooted in love. And when it always comes back to that place, there's always room for growth, whether it be with his wife or with someone else or whatever it may be, there's hope and there's faith back in him that was taken away previously. So um, if they recast Sierra, if they recast Sierra and it's not Victoria, how do you feel about that? You know, big shoes to fill, man, big shoes to fill. First of all, um, you know, I think there's a blessing and a curse with the splash that Victoria and I were able to create with the writing and whatnot. And um, 
that being said, it's, it, it makes it tougher. Um, and we, we just started, you know, it's only been a couple of years and everything caught so fast that we immediately got put on this pedestal and it's like, it makes it tough, you know, and I just, I wish her well, I want her to book something that justifies it, but if not, she comes back great. If not, and they, they want to recast, you know, the, as they say, the show must go on, you know, if, if the roles were reversed and I was like, I want to go try my hand elsewhere and swing and do my thing again. And who knows, maybe that will happen one day, but um, I'd have to know in the back of my head that there is the chance that the Ben and Sierra story, as Katie said at the beginning of this conversation, we are here to serve this story. And the story of Ben and Sierra is bigger than Robin Victoria now. And um, we just have to roll with the punches, you know? And, and I, I Godspeed to whoever does it though, you know? They, get, they better find a rock star. They better find, if they're gonna do that, they better find a rock star, but. And Katie, what can you say? So Jennifer, going into the holidays, her life's kind of been blown up. So how is she um, going to deal here? The, the, the first thing I always like to think about, the first thing that popped into my head was that that song like, and there's no place like home for the holidays. Where's my dog at this moment? Oh. Where, where's your barking, growling dog? Oh. She's ferocious. All four and point four point three pounds of her are ferocious. Okay. <laughs> Insane. Sorry. Anyway. Right, Mr. Peanut. So, you know, I think it's just about home and family and like the 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 importance of that and how that is a foundation in all of our lives and you know and, and how that reflects for her. Um, you know, what what that means to her and in, in terms of her decision making. That's I think that's the best that, that I can say. And um uh, without giving away anything and um and uh you know i just also just want to throw in that like i'm very grateful to the show for giving me the opportunity because i definitely stepped into big shoes to fill and i know what that feels like and everyone's been so kind um on the show itself and so supportive and um and uh uh you know and i'm grateful that they've taken care of our our looked out for our health and our safety and been so so caring about that as well and so the fans should worry about us because you know we have good people you know taking care of the cast and crew and you know, everybody's making great efforts to to protect each other so that we can all get through this and and keep you know bringing bringing salem to life i mean i think that's the beauty as you know michael these shows they 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 really serve something like you know like like you were saying robert um you know, I'm, I'm just so happy the show is here for the fans. I'm so grateful for this time uh, that I um, have been able to play this part. And, and uh, you know, I wish that, uh, I, I hope that, that these holidays are, I think it's really magical what we did together as a team. And I Absolutely. think, uh, I think the, the fans will be happy. I think the fans will, I, I hope so. You know, I think that it will bring them some joy and and uh, I can't wait to hear what they think. And, um, you know, and uh, and then next year, it's going to be a whole new adventure. And, um, you know, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But uh, I'm glad we're getting through this year together. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. Yeah. and I think you Absolutely. make a good point. I think, again, Days of Our Lives is such a, as soaps are for so many people who are alone, who are isolated, or are, or soaps are their extended family. So they Absolutely. Do, I was just going to say family, that, yeah. Right? And so when the holidays come, it's like, how can you not watch Days of Our Lives and the, you know, the, the episodes, but all of them, you know, it, it's their touchstone. And, and especially now with what everybody's going through, the isolation of COVID-19, right. to me, soaps bring something so unique to help so many people who are alone mm -hmm. and or can't be with their family. Um, so I think it, it, it really does provide something even more meaningful this year is what I'm saying. If it, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And I've definitely felt that just in my own life as, as an actor. I, the first day I walked back on the set, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm back here. How beautiful, right. how exciting. I get to see I Rob and Stell and people that I know and love. I get to work with Matthew Ashford and like just being a part of the soap family again for this short time is just been just it's just so great. So you know, I'm I'm super grateful and thank you so much, Michael, for inviting me to come and, and share with you. And I likewise, you. Michael, thank you for doing this. It's it's so great to see your face again. So um, I wish it could you. be in person. I wish it I could know. all be in person, but this I know. is uh, this is great, and I, I really appreciate it. When I saw your name and Katie's 
how could I say no? You know, so thank you. <laughs> thank Yay. you. Thank you guys. I wanted to do this with both of you. I want you both to have a happy holiday for both to both of you. Happy holiday season and Likewise. stay safe. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to see each other in person in 2021 at some point. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Well, I have a guys. great day. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Bye.